All right then my friends, so in this lesson, we're gonna go ahead and create a new database, and then we're gonna put some data in that database, then we'll reach out from the front end to fetch data from that database and show it in our React application. So let's go to the table editor, first of all, to set up a new table. If you've not got a table already set up, you're gonna see this screen. You can create a new table, give it a name. I'm gonna call it smoothies, and then the description is optional. Now, I want you to leave these two unchecked for now. This RLS, Enable Role Level Security, is to do with who can access the data in the database or in the table. And this down here is to do with real-time data as well. And we will be looking at both of these things later on in the course, but for now, I don't want you to check any of those two. So down here, these are the different columns inside this table. So we have an ID property by default, and that's an integer. And this is the primary key. So this is how we identify the different records that will be stored inside this particular table. And each time we create a new record, then Superbase is gonna auto-generate an ID for us, and that's gonna be unique. We also have this timestamp right here, which is called created at the property. So we're gonna add a new column, and that column is gonna be called title. That's the title of the smoothie. And then down here, we want this to be a text field. And the initial value is null. If you click on that, you can see empty string or null. The next column is gonna be the method, which again is also gonna be text. So let me scroll down here and find text again. And again, null. And then the third one is gonna be rating. And this is gonna be an integer. And again, we can specify null to be the initial value, all right? Now, if we click on these cogs right here, we can also see if we want it to be unique, we can check this. And also down here, take a look at this, define as an array. So if we wanted the value to be an array of numbers, then we could click on this and then it would be an array of integers, okay? And the same would be true for this one here, we could define as an array, all right? So let's click on save right now, and then it's gonna generate this table for us, and we can see that right here. Now, if I want to add a new record, I can click on insert row. Now, if we leave this blank, it's gonna automatically generate the ID for us. So let's do that. This is the created at timestamp, and then down here is the title. So we're gonna say for the title, something like berry blaster, and then the methods, you know what, I don't really, have a method for this. Uh, we'll just say mix the berries, <laughs> all right? And then the rating down here, we'll give this a five. Save that, and then over here, we can see the ID is one. And we have the title, the timestamp for created at, and also the method and the rating. All right, so let's do one more. So the ID again is gonna be automatically generated. The title we'll call banana booster. Uh, the method again, blah, blah, blah blend some bananas, um, if I can spell it, with milk. All right, so let's go down here. The rating is seven, click on save. And now we have these two things right here, these two records, these two rows inside this particular table. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna fetch these from the front end. All right then, so now what we're gonna do from the home component is try and fetch that data that was in the table we just set up. So we're gonna need this Superbase object to do that, but we don't need to log it to the console anymore. And what I'm also gonna do is import a couple of things from React as well, because we're gonna use these two hooks, use effect and use state. Now, the first one we're gonna use is use state because we need two pieces of state. We need some state to store the smoothies in once we fetch them, and also any errors, if there are any, once we've tried to fetch them. So let's do the error first of all. I'm gonna say const, and then the values are gonna be fetch error. You can just call it error if you wish, but I'm gonna call it fetch error. And then also set fetch error, which is the function to update it. So we set that equal to use states, and then that's gonna be null to begin with. All right, and again, don't worry if you're not used to using React. This is all just how we're using data in React. It's got nothing to do with Superbase yet. All right, so next up, const, and we'll call this one smoothies. We're gonna store the data in this value when we successfully fetch it from the database. So set smoothies is the function to update that, and we set that equal to use state. And again, we're gonna have null as the initial value. All right, so now we want to fetch the data. And in order to do that, we're gonna use the use effect hook because this use effect hook fires a function when the component first renders. So it's gonna fire it straight away. 
and it's going to try and fetch the data therefore. Now, as a second argument, we need an empty array for the dependencies because we only want this to fire once. All right, so inside here, what I'm going to do is create a function, and this function is going to be an asynchronous function. And the reason I'm doing this is so we can use the keyword await inside it. Now, we can't just say async right here in React and then use await inside here. We shouldn't do that with use effect. So instead, we create another function which is asynchronous inside it. So we'll say const fetch smoothies and we set that equal to an async function, like so. And inside that, we want to then use this super base thing to try and fetch the data. So we'll say const. And then we get two things back from this inside an object. We get the data that we want to use and also any error if there is one. And we set that equal to a weight then, super base, and then we can use some methods on this to interact with the database. So what I'm going to do is go to the next line to chain these methods. So the first thing we do is say from. So from where do we want to get the data? Well, we want to get it from the smoothies table. So we put the name of the table inside here. And then we want to dot select. Now to get them all, we just leave this blank in here. We pass in no arguments. And this is going to fetch all of the data for us, all of those records inside that table. Okay. Now then we're going to get one of two responses, either some kind of error or the data being successful. So what I'm going to do is say down here, if we have an error, if that's the case, I want to update this piece of state right here to be that error. So I'll say set fetch error like so, and we're going to pass in some kind of message. Now it could be some message from this error itself, but instead what I'm going to do is just say could not fetch the smoothies like so. And what I'll do is also log out the actual error. So console.log the error like so, so we can see that in the console. And also what I'm going to do is set the smoothies to be null, just in case previously we had a value for the smoothies and for whatever reason we've tried to fetch the smoothies again and we're getting some kind of error then I want to basically reset the smoothies to be null then. All right. So next up, I want to say if we have data, so if data like so, then it's successful and I want to set the smoothies and that's going to be the data that we get back. And then I want to set the fetch error. And I want to set that back to null. Again, just in case we had a previous value for the fetch error, then we get the data. Then I want to take away that error. OK, so that's all we really need to do. So now we're updating the state right here, dependent on whether we get an error or the actual data. Now we need to call this function down at the bottom of this use effect hook. So we'll say fetch smoothies like so. And that's pretty much it. So now we have this use effect hook, which is going to run and it's going to try and fetch the smoothies and it's going to update these pieces of state dependent on that. So what I'm going to do now is down here is output some different templates dependent on whether we have an error or whether we have the actual data, the smoothies. So first of all, we'll output the error if there is one. So we'll say fetch error, and then double ampersand and then return some kind of template if there's an error. So we'll just output a paragraph tag and inside that we'll output the fetch error. Simple. So we're just outputting the error if there is one. Okay, so next we want to say smoothies, double ampersand, and then we're gonna return some kind of template if we have smoothies. So what I'm gonna do is a div first of all, and not a sieve, a div. All right, and this div is gonna have a class name and we'll set that equal to smoothies just so we can style it later. Smoothies like so. And then inside here, I want to map through the smoothies. So we'll say smoothies dot map. And for each smoothie, we will do something. We'll output it. So we'll return a template for each one. So I will just output maybe the title in a paragraph tag for each one for now. So we can say smoothie dot title like so. And now hopefully, once we have smoothies, we should output the title of each one. So let me save this and now let's preview in a browser. All right then, so now we can see those titles right here and here. So that's working. However, we do get this warning. This is a React warning and it's saying basically each child in a list where we're mapping through the smoothies should have a key prop. So we're going to add that in a second. 
But to be honest, what I'd like to do is actually create a custom component for each smoothie, a reusable one, where it's going to output not only the title, but also the method and the rating. So let's create that for each one of these. So let's create this new component and I'm going to create it inside a new folder called components. This is going to be for reusable components that we can drop into the other pages. So new file inside there called smoothiecard.js and then inside here we need to create this component. So we'll say const smoothiecard, set that equal to a function and then inside this function we basically just want to return a template. All right, so we also need to take in a prop and this prop is going to be the smoothie itself. So let's destructure that from the props object inside this component. Now, ultimately, when we output this component right here, we're going to pass in that individual smoothie. All right, but let's flesh this out first. So inside here, we'll do a div with a class of smoothie hyphen card, just so we can style it later on. And then inside here, we'll do an H3 and inside that H3, we'll have the smoothie dot title and then below that we're going to have the smoothie method inside a paragraph tag so smoothie dot method and then finally after that we'll do a div this is going to have a class of rating and inside that we will output the smoothie rating so smoothie dot rating like so all right so now we have that template we need to export it so let's say export default and it's smoothie card. Awesome. Now we can import this inside the home component. So let me come to the top and I'll do a comment to say components and we want to import the smoothie card and that comes from the components folder smoothie card. Awesome. So down here now we can output the smoothie card like so and remember this needs a key prop. That was the warning we got in the console before. So the key is going to be the smoothie ID because that ID is unique and also we need to pass in a prop which is the smoothie so smoothie is equal to smoothie all right and that's pretty much it that's all we need to do now I am also going to add in another comment over here because inside this div not only do we want to map through the smoothies but we also want to output something else later as well so what I'm going to do in fact is cut all this and do another div and it's going to have a smoothie hyphen grid class and then paste that back in here so this is basically the grid of smoothies and then above that later on we're going to have a little kind of button navigation which is going to be how we order the smoothies by so there'll be a button for title a button for when they were created etc so i'll just say here order by buttons we're going to do that later i just wanted to kind of prepare the template now all right so i'm going to quickly show you this in a browser then we'll style it a little bit all right, so now we can see that's working. We get the title, the method, and the rating for each of these different smoothies. So it is looking a bit crappy, so let's just add a few stars to make it look at least a little bit better. So let's open up index.css, and what I'm actually gonna do is just basically copy the styles from my GitHub repo, the course files over here, woo. So if you wanna grab them, remember the link to that is down below, and I'm gonna paste them in over here. I'm gonna quickly go through them. So we have the smoothie grid, which remember, is this div right here inside the smoothies div. So that smoothie grid, we say margin top 40 pixels, display as grid, and then we give it three columns, right? So one fraction each. And then the gap between those columns is 40 pixels. So each smoothie card, I remember, that's this div right here where we output the details of the smoothie. Each of those we position, oops, not that, we give a width of 100%, so it's taking up the full column width, the third of the page. Padding 10 pixels, background white, box size in border box, border radius six pixels to give it a soft corner, and the position is relative. Now for the rating inside the card, so this thing right here, we say position absolute, and we position it at the top minus 10 pixels, so it goes above the top of the card a little bit. Same for the right, so it's in the top right, kind of overlapping the edge of the card. The background is the secondary color, which is this purple. And then the color is white, that's the text. Border radius, six pixels, width 40 pixels, height zero, and the padding top and bottom is 20 pixels. So basically the padding makes up the height instead. And the line height is zero pixels, text to line center. So all this kind of stuff right here is just basically so the text sits in the middle of the box vertically. All right, so let me save that now and preview again.
All right, and that is looking a lot better. Awesome. There is one more thing I want to show you, and that's what happens when we have an error. So back in the home component, I'm going to change this table name smoothies to something else like ABC. Now we know that table doesn't exist, so we shouldn't be able to fetch the data and instead we get an error. Then we're going to basically log that error to the console, but also update the error state to be this string right here. And this string should be output in the template because we say if we have an error, then we output it and we shouldn't see the smoothies. So let's save this and give it a whirl. All right, so now we see this message, could not fetch the smoothies, that works. And also over here, we get this error. It's a 404 error, but we get this object as well with the code and some details. And the message right here is basically saying public.abc, that's the name of the table we're trying to access, does not exist. So then, now we've set up a table with some data inside it, and we can see how to fetch that. And also we're handling the error as well.